Hello again and welcome to this me versus maths tutorial on trigonometry versus Pythagoras. Whilst I use the word trig throughout the next few minutes I'm actually only talking about right angle trigonometry today and also I just want to be really clear before we get too far in that the working out will be rapid on the examples in this tutorial. This is not a tutorial on how to use Pythagoras rule or SOCATOA. This is a tutorial on which to use for a particular problem and how you know. Right, with that said then, let's get moving. So let's start with a quick comparison between right angle trig or SOCATOA and Pythagoras. Firstly, they're both only used in right angle triangles. They can both be used to find a missing side, but with trig to find a side, we need another side and an angle, whereas with Pythagoras, we need both the other sides. Also, trig can be used to find a missing angle as long as you know two of the side lengths, whereas Pythagoras can't be used directly to find an angle at all. Right, let's get applying this then, looking at some problems and working out which approach to use for each one. OK, so our first question is asking us to find a side. So it could be trig or Pythagoras, but we are given both the other sides and no angles. So this is a Pythagoras question, because Pythagoras, we can find a missing side using both the other sides. We're looking for a shorter side. So if you viewed our Pythagoras tutorials uh, that we've produced, you may be familiar with this panel at the bottom here, SSS, short side, subtract. So square both sides, subtract one from the other, and square root the answer. As I say, we're doing all this part very, very quickly. What we're really focused on here is which technique to use for which type of question. Our next question again asks us to find a side. So, so far it could be another Pythagoras question, but if we look at the information that we've been given, we can see this time around there's a given side and a given angle. Therefore, we are using trig, as it allows us to find a missing side using another side and an angle. I'll speedily label my sides and identify the two active sides. So Katoa, it's so it uses an O and an H, so we'll be using sine. Again, I'm not trying to teach you again how to do this part, so let's substitute our values in. Multiply sin 27 or sine 27 by 3.4 to give us our final answer for Z. Next up we have an isosceles triangle. Now it may appear at first glance that we've only been given one side, but because it's an isosceles that means we actually know the other side there as well. So we can definitely use Pythagoras to find a missing side using both the other sides. We're looking for the longest side this time, so we'll square both sides, add them and root it. So square our 6.2s and add them together, square root that answer and round it off. Now we have the same question again because actually you could use trig on this triangle as well if you wanted to. How exactly? Well if it's an isosceles triangle the other two angles in this triangle must be the same. As we know angles in a triangle are 280 and it has a right angle in it so the other two angles must be 45 degrees each and if we mark that angle on we could use trig to find a missing side using another side and an angle. I'm not saying that's the method to use and personally I probably wouldn't use that method for this question but you can see there that actually we could have used trig and we get exactly the same answer. I think it's just useful to see sometimes there is more than one way to tackle a question like that. Our next question asks us to find a missing angle. Pythagoras does not really use angles at all so this must be a job for Sokatoa. That allows us to find a missing angle using two sides which is exactly the information we've got in this question. We're using the opposite and the adjacent, so tan is the function that we want to use. Substitute our values in, and as it's an angle question, you should know we'll have to use an inverse trig function. Put that little lot into a calculator, get an answer, and round it accurately. 
Moving on, we have a starting point here, a rectangle, and we're being asked to find angle D, C, E. With this form of notation, the middle letter is arguably the most important. D, C, E means the angle made at C by lines from D and E. Now we already have a line from D, so let's add one from E. We've now created a right angle triangle, or two actually, and we can mark on the angle that we are being asked to find. I'm going to focus on this triangle now as I don't actually need the rest of that shape. We're being asked to find a missing angle using two sides, so it's time for some trig again. You know the drill, label the sides, identify the active sides. We're using tan yet again as that uses the opposite and the adjacent. And you can see the working for the rest of the question now. Again, if you just want to look at this in detail, then pause the video here. But we're going to move on and look at one last question, and it is a biggie. A question like this will be worth a significant amount of marks in an exam and it often puts students off as it just all seems a bit too much. We're going to break it down into small parts and work our way through. Firstly, this shape is not a badly drawn rectangle, however it is made up of two right angled triangles as we can see. If we look at the pink triangle that angle E is in, we can't answer the question yet. We can use trig to find a missing angle, but we need to know two sides, and at the moment, we only know one. If we go back to our original shape now, notice that the two triangles share a side. Actually, it happens to be the hypotenuse of both triangles as well. So if, first of all, we focus on the blue triangle, we can use Pythagoras to find a missing side using the other two sides that we've been given. We won't dwell on this, here's the working out to find that long side. Remember that this also gives us the length of the hypotenuse of the pink triangle too. I'm going to keep this number fairly accurate as if I round it off too much here, my final answer will be less accurate than I might like. So let's put this value onto our original picture and then let's again focus on the pink triangle. We now know two sides. so. We can use trigonometry to find the missing angle. Let's do just that. Label our sides up and identify our active sides. We'll be using cos, and as we're looking for an angle again, we'll be using the inverse function like so. Again, just pause the video for a second here if you wanted to have a good look at that working out. And well done, you've made it. And hopefully today's tutorial has helped you to see the differences between trigonometry and Pythagoras and how to decide which to use and when. Personally, I think you deserve a bit of a rest now, but when you're ready to look at another topic, I suggest you head over to the website at meversusmath.com for some inspiration. And don't forget you can track your progress for free. Thanks for listening, and I'll hopefully be talking to you again soon. So long for now.